welcome back to TSPEC TV and what will probably be our very last video of 2017 even though this will actually be released most likely in 2018. But anyway, today we're going to be brightening up this very dull grey drizzly day by fitting my car with a whole bunch of new LED lights including some new halo lights which I actually bought at LRO I know it took me a while to get around to fitting them um, new halo lights for the headlamps and then replacing all of the side lights and rear lights, fog lights and everything with a full wide pack LED kit so let's check it out so starting over on this side we have the brand new headlamps which are the LED halos which are rather in fashion at the moment in the Land Rover world which I purchased at this year's LRO show in Peterborough um, and another cool thing is this ring should also light up as part of the indicator if we can get that working as well. And then over on this side we've got the full LED kit which is a Y-Pack or RDX kit whichever one you want to call it. Um, but all in all these should all just be brighter and more energy efficient than the ones that are currently on the car because um, like many things on the on the standard Defender, the headlamps are a bit pathetic. So we're going to be fitting all of this today, and that means firstly, basically just doing a lot of unscrewing. All the lights and the plastic uh, surrounds here are all just held in with screws. And same on the back, the lights are just held in with screws, so we've just got to do a lot of unscrewing to get all of this stuff out, and then pull it out, put the new stuff in, figure out the wiring, and we should be good to go. So we've now pulled out all the old lights and the plastic surrounds and everything which leaves us with the Defender which looks like it's had his eyes pulled out and uh, now we're trying to sort out the wiring for the new ones. But over here you can also see how bad the bezels, or the, the uh, rings around the old headlamps are because they are just falling apart. So I should also get myself some new ones of those. Just a quick heads up for any of you guys doing this yourselves, I've just been trying to remove the license plate uh, light here. And to get this bracket off there is a bolt here and a bolt here and I was spinning them around endlessly trying to work out how to get them off until Nissa pointed out to me that you actually have to remove this panel. I don't think all Land Rovers or all Defenders have this but mine did. You have to remove this panel and then you can undo the nut from behind. So it is now a few weeks since we filmed the first part of this video and I shall now explain why. Basically a few weeks ago we filmed the first half and installed the smaller LED lights both front and rear and then when it came to installing the actual headlamps we discovered that the bezels around them that hold them in were horribly rusted and uh, there wasn't very much holding the lights in at all. So there was no point in trying to install the new lights, rather I ordered a new set or a new sort of mounting kit. Um, for the lights and it, with the aim of continuing it now. So a lot of you have been asking where this video is and why we suddenly filmed it and stopped but we're going to continue now and get these headlights in. So to give you a comparison these are the old rings we took off a few weeks ago and you can see they are not in the best shape and these are the new ones I have just received which I believe is stainless steel so they shouldn't rust which is good and then what I also got were these sort of bowls as well which go onto the back of the lights or rather you mount the lights into there um, and what's interesting is my car didn't actually have these originally and we just kind of assumed that it was only a thing for older generation defenders because Nissan's car has them my car has never had these but as far as we can tell my car does in fact need these it's just not doesn't have them for some reason at some point someone must have taken them off and has never put them back on so we've got those as well so this should be a much, much cleaner install. We can put the lights in here with the new bezels and then we can go through the wiring as well. And we've still got to do the reverse light and the fog light um, from the RDX kit, YPAC kit, whatever you want to call it, in here. So that's today's job. Having said what we just said about those plastic bowls for the headlamps, both Huey and this other Puma Defender here do not have them for their headlamps. 
So I don't know if it's meant to be on there or not, but I've got them, so we may as well install them. So we've just drilled some slightly bigger holes in these bowls so we can fit the ends of these wires through here. We are not professional. Oh, that's nice. So neat. So while Nissa finishes off doing the wiring for the headlamps, I'm going to come around here to the back and try and sort out the reverse and fog lights because we didn't quite go around to doing those either last time, which are these nice round ones here as opposed to the uh, usual rectangular ones. But to get this plastic bracket off around the edge of the light but on both sides, I need to undo two nuts, I believe, which are behind that rubber flap. And uh, that's going to be a bit of a pain, particularly as everything is wet and muddy under here. But it's the only way I can do it. The nuts on the other side of this light, on the inside of the wheel arch, are in such bad shape, there's absolutely no point in me even trying to attempt to do it from that side, because one of them has just kind of disintegrated. Um, and the other one is just a rusty mess. So what I'm going to try and do is do it from this side instead and I might have to just be a bit destructive. The front end is all done. We finally got these new LED halo lights in that I bought at LRO last year, so I've been waiting to put those in since last September. But anyway, Nissa has just disappeared off for a bit to go and sort something out. out. Um, but I'm going to try and get the fog and reverse lights uh, on, the new ones, these round ones here. And uh, as you probably just saw in the previous clip, if I put that in, it basically just had to, you know, <laughs> chisel, hammer and chisel that off um, because the other side uh, in the wheel arch is just, you know, was no point in, basically there was no point in trying to do anything else um, and it took, you know, 30 seconds to just get, off, get it off like that. Um, however, I'm actually going to have to drill a new hole here because these ones are slightly too wide for the new bracket and then somehow figure out how I'm going to do the reverse light over here because getting into the wheel arch to insert the new nuts for the new bracket is going to be really interesting because it's going to be very tight in there. So I've got the bracket for the new LED light on at last. I thought that was never going to get on. But just to show you guys something in here because I screwed up a bit earlier. Uh, the nuts you want to be undoing, if you are going to undo them rather than just hack them off like we did, they're actually under that rubber flap you can kind of see at the back there. Well, that's covered in mud. Um, because earlier I undid those two by mistake. And those two are, of course, the little brackets there that hold the cross member on. So that was a mistake. Um, what you actually need to do is get under that flap, which is really awkward. Um, but unfortunately, that's what you have to do. Anyway, I'm going to give a go at doing the reverse light now, but I'm really not looking forward to this one. So what we did for the wiring, there was quite a lot of people asking me about the winch, how I wired that up. Uh, I used this diagram, it was the only thing you get with the box, and it is on the yellow bit of the box here, uh, where the wiring diagram is. And what we did here, you see you got the light, this bit, and then you get the normal uh, connector to the light, and you get a uh, transformer thing, it's called exclusive adapter, DC to AC uh, transverter. And we didn't use that because the lights work just fine. Uh, then you also got another adapter if you're running newer types of lights, so you can switch those over to a, you get like an oval kind of uh, plug, and you have to use that one, which is also in it. Then you get this little thingy here, which is where all the magic happens. Uh, first, you got the two wires from the headlight. One goes into the normal one, uh, where you took out the old one, and the other bit goes into this little box here. You just simply plug that into it. Now, there's a yellow wire coming off the end of that plug. That needs to get wired into the side where the headlight is onto the indicator. 
that way you get that ring around it. If you don't want that, you can just cut it off or hide it behind it. But if you want that uh, uh, indicator effect on the light, you need to wire that into a, the indicator on the right side of the vehicle. And that splits into two, one of, uh, for the right one, one for the left one. If you go back to the rear bit here, you've got one where it says car battery ACC plus, and you've got car battery ground, and then you've got the yellow relay connects to the headlight BCC plus. What we did, simply because we didn't bother to run a right wire all the way from the battery all the way to the front and onto that bit, uh, we simply just cut those snips off and then hook it onto the position lighting of the car, both the ground and the, the plus, and that yellow one. Every time we seem to put power through that, everything just shorts out. So we just leave that one out of it. We haven't wired that up to anything. But that one onto the position light, doesn't matter, uh, matter what side, and that one onto the ground, on the light or somewhere else, and you should get light up and running like we just have now. Uh, and the reason why we chose to put that one onto the positive is because we're running LED lights and that draws a lot, of less, a lot less power, so that's why we could do it. You might need to think a second time before you do it if you're running the normal indicator lights, just so it doesn't blow a fuse or anything. So before this video comes to a close, I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration of the new lights. As you can see behind me, they look absolutely awesome, but let's go in for a closer look. Yeah.